strong. So hello everyone, it's Cleos here. Are you ready to get started? Let's get started. So hello everyone. Our lesson this week is the kingdom is divided. And it's from 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 1 through 24. So now I'm going to send you over to Miss Latoya for our memory verse and prayer. And I'll see you right back here in just a minute. <laughs> Welcome back. It's time for our memory verse. This week, we're in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 12, verse 15. But first, I have a vocab word for you. The word is affairs. That means an event or a sequence. Here's our verse. For the turn of affairs was from the Lord, that he might fulfill his word. That's 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 15. Join me, Miss Toya, next week for another verse in a word. Bye-bye. All right, let's pray before Miss Cleo starts our lesson. Yep, bow your heads, close your eyes. Here we go. Dear Lord, thank you for another Sunday to hear your word. Thank you for Miss Cleo for preparing the word to teach us today. Thank you for our children for taking the time out to listen to the word. May they share one thing they learned today with someone. We thank you in advance what you're gonna do with this lesson. Amen. All right, it's time to start our lesson with Miss Cleo. So welcome back everyone. As I said, our lesson this week is the kingdom is divided. And it's from 1 Kings chapter 12, verses one through 24. So today we're going to learn about receiving good advice and bad advice. And advice is when someone gives you uh, their opinion on something. You may ask them, what do you think I should do here? So, you know, just for our age group, how about if there were two boys, there was Marcus and Tommy. And say that Marcus and Tommy are best friends. And Marcus knows other friends outside of Tommy. These friends come over and they say to Marcus, Marcus, um, we can already start a basketball game. Uh, how would you like to come and join us? And they also say, but don't bring Tommy. We don't like him. How do you think Marcus should respond to that? What should he say? Think about it. So we're gonna learn about hearing good advice and bad advice. And sometimes getting advice from our friends and how really the advice that we really should listen to is God's advice. So now I'm gonna be reading from the NIRV Adventure Bible for early readers. And I'm going to be starting in chapter 12. Now, before I start, I just want to give you a little background. The background that I'm about to tell you is found in 1 Kings chapter 11. Solomon at the time is David's son, and he is ruling. But Solomon has sinned. Solomon has started worshiping idols. Because remember, there were other nations that were around the children of Israel at this time. And so Solomon now is starting worshiping idols. And God has been angry with him for doing this. And God told Solomon that he was gonna tear the kingdom away from him. Now there's a young man and his name is Jeroboam. Jeroboam is the son of the official who works for King Solomon. Jeroboam is a good worker and also he's a man of valor. And a man of valor meant he was a warrior. He was a fighter. So King Solomon liked Jeroboam 
And so what he did was he actually put Jeroboam over some men that were working on a project. So you can kind of say that Jeroboam was now their supervisor. So it turns out one day Jeroboam leaves to go out into the country and he comes across this prophet. And a prophet was a man, a human person like you and I, that God would speak to. So in the Old Testament, these prophets, God would speak to them and give them words that they were supposed to take back to the people. Jeroboam runs into this prophet, Ahijah, and Ahijah says to Jeroboam, God is going to tear the kingdom from Solomon, and he will give you, Jeroboam, 10 tribes, and you can be their king. Well, Wow. Anyway, Jeroboam doesn't do anything about this at first. It turns out that Solomon finds out about this. And Solomon really wants to kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam runs off to Egypt to hide for protection. Now Solomon does have a son. And now usually when the king dies, his son fills in and he's the new king. Now, Solomon's son is named Rehoboam. And yes, their names are very similar. Jeroboam is with a J, and Rehoboam is with the R. So now we're going to find out how listening to advice from some of your friends is not always a good idea. So now Solomon has died, and his son Rehoboam is now becoming the king. So I'm going to read 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 1 through 7. Rehoboam went to Shechem. All the people of Israel had gone there to make him king. Jeroboam heard about it. He was the son of Nebat. Jeroboam was still in Egypt at that time. He had gone there for safety. He wanted to get away from King Solomon, but now he returned from Egypt. So the people sent for Jeroboam, and the whole community of Israel went to Rehoboam. They said to him, Your father put a heavy load on our shoulders, but now make our work, make I'm sorry, make our hard work easier. Make the heavy load on us lighter, then we'll serve you. Rehoboam answered, Go away for three days, then come back to me. So the people went away. King Rehoboam asked the elders for advice. They had served his father Solomon while he was still living. Rehoboam asked them, What advice can you give me? How should I answer these people? They, they replied, Serve them today. Give them what they are asking for. Then they'll always serve you. So Solomon at that time was uh, building a lot of things and he was working the people very hard and he was also main, making the people pay a lot of money and so now the people are asking his son Rehoboam to make their workload lighter and that they will continue to serve him and that they will be loyal to him so Rehoboam goes to the elders and the elders give their reply and they're saying pretty much, be fair with the people. Be, be favorable with the people. And they will continue to serve you. So now I'm going to read from verse 8 to verse 16. But Rehoboam didn't accept the advice the elders gave him. Instead, he asked for advice from the younger men who had grown up with him and were now serving him. He asked them, What's your advice? How should I answer these people? They say to me, Make the load your father put on our shoulders lighter. The young men who had grown up with him gave their answer. They replied, These people say to you, Your father put a heavy load on our shoulders. Make it lighter. Tell them, My little finger is stronger than my father's legs. My father put a heavy load on your shoulder. 
but I'll make it even heavier. My father beat you with whips, I'll beat you with bigger whips. Three days later, Jeroboam and all of the people returned to Rehoboam. That's because the king had said, come back to me in three days. The king answered the people in a mean way. He didn't accept the advice elders had given him. Instead, he followed the advice of the young man. He said, my father put a heavy load on your shoulders, but I'll make it even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I'll beat you with bigger whips. So the king didn't listen to the people. That's because the Lord had planned it that way. What he had said through Ahijah came true. Ahijah had spoken the Lord's message to Jeroboam, the son of Nebak. Ahijah was from Shiloh. All of the people of Israel saw that the king refused to listen to them. So they answered the king. They said, we don't have any share in David's royal family. We don't have any share in Jesse's son. People of Israel, let's go back to our homes. David's royal family, take care of your own kingdom. So the people of Israel went home. Wow. The elders told Rehoboam, be favorable with the people. The friends of Rehoboam said, you think my father was hard, I'll be even harder, and how dare you tell me how I should treat you. This is two separate groups of people advice to the king, and the king chose to listen to the vice of his friends. You know, a good leader is willing also to be a servant. And we have a good example of that. And that's Jesus. Now, what God had told the prophet, which he had also said to Jeroboam, came true. This had nothing to do with Jeroboam. God had planned all of this. So now let's see what happens. So now I'm reading 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 17 to 24. But Rehoboam still ruled over the Israelites who were living in the town of Judah. Adoniram was in charge of those who were forced to work hard for King Rehoboam. The king sent him out among all of the Israelites, but they killed him by throwing stones at him. King Rehoboam was able to get away in his chariot. He escaped to Jerusalem. Israel has refused to follow the royal family of David to this very day. All of the people of Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned. They sent for him. They wanted him to meet with the whole community. Then they made him king over the entire nation of Israel. Only the tribe of Judah remained true to David's royal family. Rehoboam arrived in Jerusalem. He brought together 180,000 fighting men from the royal house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. And he decided to make war against the royal house of Israel. Solomon's son, Rehoboam wanted his fighting men to get the kingdom of Israel back for him. But a message from God came to Shemira. He was a man of God. God said to him, Speak to Solomon's son, Rehoboam, the king of Judah. Speak to the royal house of Judah and Benjamin. Also speak to the rest of the people. Tell all of them. The Lord says, do not go up and fight against the Israelites. They are your relatives. I want every one of you to go back home. Things that have happened exactly the way I planned them. So the fighting men obeyed the Lord's message. They went home again, just as he had ordered. So, Rehoboam wanted to go up and fight the ten tribes that had left him. 
But the word of the Lord came to another prophet. And he said, God said, do not go up and fight your relatives. So they did. And so that is how the kingdom became divided. Um, you know, sometimes our disobedience brings consequences. And what I mean by that is like, say your mother told you, don't play with the ball in the house. And yet you play with the ball in the house and you break a lamp. So your mother told you not to play with the ball in the house. And now from playing with the ball, the ball broke a lamp. What's going to happen? Now you're in trouble. Now probably your mom will put you on punishment. She'll take some things away from you. You might even get a beating. So that's how it is with us. You know, as long as we stay and do what God told us to do, he will bless us. But it's only when we decide to do what we want to do that God will chastise us. And he still chastises us in love, but he chastises us to try to bring us back to him. So now we see 10 tribes now have gone with Jeroboam and Rehoboam has Judah and Benjamin. So now let's just see how well of a king Jeroboam will be. That's the end of our story. Talk to see you later. Be strong. Be strong. Oh, 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 oh,